second panel discussion and I can see our uh, session chair is already ready with a smile, not yet, but the smile will come in. Yes, the smile is there. So let's get into it. In a diverse country like India, where the dialect changes every hundred kilometers. Did you know that? Yes, it does. How do brands communicate with the consumers and keep the local ethos and tonality in mind? We have an interesting panel sharing the insights, the views on the topic, importance of multilingual and diverse cultures in building brand love, powered by AVP Nadu. And I'm very delighted to welcome our session chair, Nazia Albi Rahman, editor, Exchange for Media. And of course, our great panelists joining us is Kavita Ganeshan, Head Brand Marketing, TVS Eurogrip, Rahul Gandhi, CMO India, and UAE ID Fresh Food, Naveen Draman, Senior Vice President and South Head, 82.5 Communications, and of course, Director Naveen's Naveen Kumar. And over to you, Nazia, and let's hear it from all of the panelists about multilingual, and who better than me? But yes, I'm hearing this one. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mithin, and uh, welcome each one of you. I'm really sorry that we uh, got late by 10 minutes. Uh, I don't know if this was, there was a technical delay or what, but you know, it looks like that we are running late. So we'll quickly start on uh, with our interesting topic. You know, marketing has always been a tough game, but now with the kind of explode we have uh, had in the mediums in the last one decade through which uh, one can connect with the consumers, a general market message is not serving its purpose. Particularly in a country as vast and vibrant as India, it fails to include the unique culture, language, communication styles, uh, media consumption habits of millions of Indians. So. Uh, all of this makes a multicultural marketing strategy a must for every marketer in today's scenario. But how do you do that is what I want to uh, know from all of you today. And uh, culture in itself is such, an, uh, such a complex uh, concept. So I would want to start with uh, one of the marketers, uh, Kavita or uh, Rahul, you know, uh, on uh, how can brands embrace a multicultural, multilingual uh, marketing strategy? Uh, what are what is its importance and uh, how how does it help the bottom line? So Kavita or Rahul, I mean, either of one, either of you can start. Rahul, you're on mute. Yeah, sure. I'll go first, Nazia. Yeah, sure, uh, sure, good sure. afternoon to everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with everyone on this panel. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to start off by saying uh, the Indian consumer himself has evolved so much over the years. I mean, a lot of us would relate to the fact that while we were growing up, I think Indian audiences were a lot more accepting of uh, insensitivities with, with respect to regional and cultural and linguistic uh, understanding by brands as well as content providers. For instance, I remember I grew up in a household which very happily watched Junoon in a dubbed regional language. And we had no objection to the way our language was portrayed there. Uh, however, I think today's Indian consumer and viewer is a lot more discerning. And a lot of that, I think uh, we should thank the digital penetration for because a lot of people have now um, started consuming content in their own regional languages and that's made them more discerning. And I think brands and marketers have been very quick to understand this reality in the last decade or so. And we see a lot of difference in their approach towards cultural and linguistic sensitivities. So uh, if you look at it, a brand I've always admired as I grew up was Asian Pains because uh, you know, way back in the day, uh, they had campaigns which were made regionally relevant. So while they had a Sunil Babu playing for the HSM market, they had a Chandru playing for a Tamil Nadu market. They always had their priority markets in place and they took care of their regional and linguistic sensitivities. Um, today, I think both marketers uh, and, cult uh, you know, creative agencies have really become aware of the fact that they need to be relevant with respect to the linguistic sensitivities. And they have invested in terms of both talent and outfits that can uh, help this requirement. Rahul, would you want to add to it? 
yeah uh, i thank you for, for inviting me on the panel yeah, i think kavita made some very interesting points especially the point on on you know how that is possible people are less accepting of you know somebody else's culture now but uh, i'll i'll try to give a perspective that i have on this topic uh, i think uh, as far as uh, you know uh, cultural segmentation is concerned yeah i think uh, marketing at least has taught historically that there is various kinds of segmentation and we have, we tend to do whenever we are making media plans we tend to do various kinds of segmentations deciding okay this is how we want to target north west this is how we want to target so, so it's been there and uh, uh, this whole digitization yeah that uh, was touched upon by kavita as well what that has allowed is that as digitization has grown targeting micro cultures has become more possible yeah and uh, now targeting micro culture is obviously you know if you have to target india you have to target like i don't know how many different languages yeah and how many different regions and the opening statement that uh, mithin had made was actually the changes after every you know um, 100 kilometers or so yeah so then finally what it happens for a marketer is that it actually enables him to reach out to small multicultural groups who may be speaking different languages you know who may be you know having different lifestyles having different income groups and that makes the whole segmentation a bit more roi effective yeah that's why marketers spend to you know when you ask them are you going for broadcast media are you going for digital somewhere at the back of the mind the undercurrent that you hear is it's more efficient yeah it gives you a better roi yeah and i think as digitization is growing uh, multicultural targeting and you know um, you know uh, channels which are catering to small you know psychographic user group or demographic or geographic user group will tend to see more investments so uh, i mean just to avoid confusion uh, i'll address you as mr Nav- raman navin sure and, no problem and i can call the other navin navin <laughs> so uh, yeah. so navin uh, kumar i want to come to you uh, what what is yeah. your perspective on this See, um again we are in the real estate business so here uh, it doesn't change by uh, by the 100 kilometers it changes by the project uh, it changes by the postcode uh, a, a different project could be one project could address a cosmopolitan audience uh, if you will and then there could be another project that is uh, for example there's a project where we have a vegetarian specific units Uh, and then there are projects which are extremely cosmopolitan. Uh, so we need to, and uh, there are projects which cater to uh, an older demographic, um, so on. So what we what we find is uh, it is like uh, Rahul mentioned, it's efficient to target different uh, communication to different audiences depending on what they or what we want uh, wish they consume. so i mean this is out there uh, in a big way and uh, in real estate it's a lot more uh, uh, detailed uh, per se it doesn't change by 100 kilometers it's just project to project postcode to postcode mr raman i want to understand from you uh, because you know uh, you're from the agency you know people who create who have the responsibility to you know uh, convert the ideas that marketers give to you and presented to the consumers how much is the demand these days and uh, what are the challenges that you face and and if you can give us an example you know which from which we can understand that how you picked up a, a general message and converted it into a regional kind of a thing you know and and without the message losing its originality and uh, texture and other things sure nasia yeah. Uh, first of all thank you very much uh, for having me over uh, great being a part of this panel uh, before i address this question i'll add my two bits on the previous one which you had asked the others you know it's, it's a very funny anecdote uh, if you look beyond the four or now five southern states for everybody down south the rest of the country is not indian similarly if you go up north anybody in the southern part of the country is a madrasi <laughs> now so fundamentally, yeah. fundamentally that needs to change and the irony is that the eastern part of the country and the western part of the country asks what about us there's only north and south and north east is a different subject altogether uh thankfully goa is lucky because everybody loves goa goa does <laughs> so 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 you know, fundamentally for me that's the larger uh, problem you know uh and unfortunately marketers cannot afford to do that mistake 
you know the most hated movie down south would be chennai express because every tamilian knows that no no tamilian speaks the way he's been depicted in that movie now a uh, content provider a move so uh, the film industry can get away with that but can a marketer get away with that can the consumer is absolutely you know unforgiving so it's it's, it's a bigger challenge and as mithun rightly started this conversation saying that the 16% of the world population is with us and we have about 28 states and union territories we speak about 170 odd languages 500 different dialects and one recent uh, google data says that 90% of the people in india prefer to watch consume content in in a local language now if this is the ground reality how do you communicate to all of them in one language you cannot you know we cannot treat india as one country it's 28 different countries and every country every state behaves differently and even within that if you say you know eastern up would behave totally different from western up a southern tamil nadu would behave totally different from another tamil nadu and then it culturally we are so diverse so strategically what we do is at the same time you cannot be positioning your brand 28 different types and you cannot be communicating in 20 different ways but broadly you know one formula with which you cracked and uh, strategically the difference that i see between the south and the north are that you know there are there are cert- certain category codes certain codes of behavior that changes you know every time we, and uh, i i don't know the reason behind this but north and west are somewhere similar south and east are somewhere similar when it comes to this particular behavior when when you uh, communicate and talk to people up north what matters most is the looks is the packaging is the glamour question whereas when you come down south it's more the claim or the reason to believe as we call that gets questioned you know it's more of an emotional communication that works better up north as compared to the southern part it's more functional more it's more rational and and one one very very important point is that in terms of budget you know, whether it's the south whether it's the east people question it to folds you know you need to give them that extra reason to convince them why should i pay you that extra buck for your brand for this product whereas recency matters a lot of not so these are certain codes that we follow basis which how, how we communicate as opposed to you know, slice and dice and look at the specific market that you want to talk to the product that you're offering and hence you position your brand and you talk about it. well one example i'll give you uh, 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 here in bangalore one of the largest clients that we work with is himalaya himalaya which is into personal care and it's a top company on the personal care business uh, the hair care category is that we work uh, a lot with uh, which is primarily to do with shampoos and hair oils and cream when we talk to the 22 23 year old girl up north you know for, for her when you, when you talk about a particular way of hair and then what we promise is that if we for, for example i'm saying that i want to promise what what i would deliver is healthy hair to you what healthy hair to would mean to somebody up north would be voluminous silky good looking hair versus that healthy hair down south would mean long dark hair so do you change your core proposition no you don't your purpose still remains the same your proposition remains the same your promise remains the same but what does promise that promise translate into in different markets that changes so we we fine tune it executionally you know when you, when you dip, that the new depict the kind of people you want to depict the narrative changes the script changes the setting changes and of course talent the face of the brand changes so we need to have a dual strategy for for brands when it comes to different markets so uh, uh rahul if i can uh, come back to you 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 handle india and dubai i mean for you it is it is not just uh, you know uh, switching from one region to another but you know two different countries Uh, how do you do it you know uh, localizing your content keeping the cultural ethos and tonality in mind by tapping the right cultural insights you know uh, how what kind of uh, briefs do you give to your agencies you know when you are launching uh, the same product in india and dubai luckily ua is mostly keralites luckily yeah. <laughs> so we can treat it like a kerala yeah um, yeah but but yeah the, you know in fact i think the way id handled it you asked me how i handled it i don't know how i handled it i'll try to answer that but the way id handled it is actually i'm i'm from delhi yeah uh, and uh, i'm managing a idli dosa malabar paratha marketing company yeah and i have had no experience of ever having cooked you know idli or dosa at home because we don't know how to make batter yeah the way id has done it is actually the same approach you know when we go into a a particular culture yeah uh, we tend to build teams which are made for that culture 
Yeah, that is one way that we do it. So if ID wants to become big in Mumbai or wants to launch in Delhi, you know, and already has an understanding of South, they will diversify that way by hiring local. Similarly, if we were to be in UAE, even now UAE may be very similar to, you know, uh, uh, Kerala, but the fact is it is still a different culture. It is residing within a different culture. Yeah. So one is that, you know, the organizational hiring strategy will be different. Now coming to how I would typically as a marketing, you know, resource in the organization would handle it. I guess, you know, it, 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 it is, there are two kinds of challenges involved in, you know, communication. Yeah, one is uh, production, you have to produce, and then is dissemination. Yeah. If you can produce it and you can disseminate it, you can most likely target. Yeah. Now production, yeah, would mean that you could produce it in many languages, which are audio dubs, which is something that the TV industry has been doing over the past so many years. The other way is that you could actually customize the visual part of it as well. Yeah, because audiovisual will be the entire completion of community. When when people tend to do you know customization of visual content, they tend to run into two kinds of challenges, which are either a, a, a timeline related challenge or a cost related challenge. Luckily, these challenges are mostly only applicable to video content, and video is the dominant one. These challenges are not applicable to static content. So creating a banner in eight, 10 languages and putting it up on a website is far more easy than creating videos without, with more than just audio dubs, where video changes, where you of one. Brands do it, but it has a timeline and a cost challenge. So the way we handle it, luckily UAE is Kerala. So we go with the audio dub group and in digital for or any, you know, static medium, which is easily transferable and does not have timelines and cost attached to it. We tend to go multilingual and we tend to sharp top it. Yeah, which is social and you know a programmatic stuff and you know stuff that you do on Google. Well, uh, uh, Dubai is Kerala. ID is not just South only only South Indians eating. I mean, we also eat it. I'm also from Delhi, but I also eat it. So you know, what about consumers like me? I mean, how do you connect? How do you want to connect to consumers like me? We'll we'll have a Delhi campaign or a Bombay campaign. Don't don't worry on that. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, because as 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 uh, you know, Raman uh, Naveen was saying, they are very different, and he made some very very valid points about differences between north and south. And yeah, I I we do understand that you know sometimes it might have single way of communicating to the entire TG because it's more media efficient, production efficient, but it is not brand efficient sometimes. Finally, you know, the uh, point that Naveen Kumar was uh, making that, you know, each pin code has its own culture. Actually, each family has its own culture. Yeah? And that gets agglomerated to apartment societies, pin codes, and then to town, city, states. And then we say Asia has a culture. You know? That's how it gets agglomerated. But yeah, the deeper we go, uh, the better we'll be able to connect emotionally. Kavita, your your brand again is is more about you know two wheelers and three wheelers, and if I I, I mean correct me if I'm wrong. I mean maybe you you are trying to cater more to uh, two tier three tier uh, uh, you know uh, client uh, consumers. So how do you uh, you know what kind of messaging are you looking at when you shift from let's say uh, Bhopal to Kochi? You know you 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 shifting between different kind of entirely two different cities. So what, what is your brief to the agency? So um, it's at multiple levels. At one level, uh, you know, for digital campaigns, like Rahul said, it's fairly easier because you're just dealing with banners which need to be translated, creatives that need to change and stuff like that. But when you're doing your national media campaign, like uh, one of uh, our recent campaigns, the learnings were immense because uh, this panel discussion is exactly what I experienced in my professional life um, a couple of months ago, because we were here building a, a you know a national level brand film, which was supposed to make sense to the entire country, because you know often uh, I know that there are you know films that are getting shot with multiple cast and crew simultaneously today, like a Bahubali. But unfortunately, not all brands and organizations can afford that kind of a production cost, number one. And number two, they don't have the kind of timelines. And the third most important challenge is that usually a brilliant creative idea stems in one language. And then to translate it in the true essence of that uh, idea 
to other languages becomes a challenge so you know our recent most campaign was exactly this you know it was around uh, india being a country full of turns and we spoke about mode as a word in hindi is so beautiful so simple so colloquial convert i mean translating that into multiple languages itself became a challenge and you know uh, this is something which we dealt with the you know we did a couple of things which i can share with the group one thing we did was we went to regional experts we went to language experts and cultural experts and we did not go for a translation or a transliteration rather we said take the essence of the script of the ad film and then rewrite it in your own language you know for instance there was uh, i had a lot of personal learnings too over here for instance there's a small sequence in our film where uh, it's based on the insight that indians actually take a turn uh, based on some superstitions like a cat crossing a road which most of us can relate to you know i mean we might not believe in it but that's something indians commonly do when we went into the language translations of our script one thing we discovered was that this does not make sense to a malayali in kerala it uh, you know people don't believe that a cat crossing a road is uh, superstitious or you know brings in ill luck so we took care that we respect the cultural sensitivities of the region and when we translated this and got our malayalam edits out we ensured that sequence is edited out of it so these are small nuances but the reason why i'm mentioning it is because there are many practical difficulties you know and not every brand is at that stage of the life cycle where they can rope in an amitabh for hsm and uh, you know mohanlal for kerala and uh, somebody else for tamil nadu so navin uh, uh, coming to you you know uh, i mean hair all i can a lot of people can buy just because it is you know i don't attach so much of culture or ethos or other things to it but housing is something that you know it is it is it is all about you know living in the similar cultural kind of an area and particularly in a country like india where you know south indians have their own societies and you know everyone would have want to have their own kind of uh, you know traditions and cultures being so how do you how do you handle it uh, you know with every project that you launch um uh, thank you fortunately uh, yeah, real estate is a very targeted uh marketing segment so you know what you're targeting it's it's not going to be generic you're not going to reach out to everyone who makes uh, let us say 10000 rupees a month to whatever 10 lakh rupees a month it's it's uh, the each project is different so the content that you create for uh, a project uh, would largely help because of the targeting of the project itself so the challenges arise when we go into a, a large uh, cosmopolitan townships let us say a thousand unit or a 500 unit or a project like that uh, that's where uh, we start uh, facing these uh, cultural imbalances that we need to or cultural uh, targeting that we need to address uh, so How what do we start do sorry how do you address that correct uh, so what we what we do is uh, first we start off with a linguistic play uh, so we uh, for us it's a a, a straight uh, translation uh, and uh, depending on the project let's say a cosmopolitan project also allows us to do transliteration both in uh, both from english to that language uh, or uh, or uh, the reverse uh, itself so depending on the project and the medium we choose again uh, real estate also has very little challenge from a, a video content uh, perspective what rahul mentioned because here uh, we are, or what kavita talked about we are not going to create a lot of video content uh, it's it's going to be limited video content uh, mostly digital content so it's so much easier trying to you know uh, get the banners up on your web pages get the uh, the images out there or a, a print media a print media advertisement be it uh, on an english newspaper or a vernacular uh, uh, print paper or a magazine so it's that much uh, easier but what we do is uh, depending on the project uh, we give uh, we translate the advertisement or we also go ahead making new content because this content is not 
as expensive as let us say producing a, an outright uh, video video content so that that makes life a little easier for us now uh, mr raman so you know uh, i i kind of you you told us in your first answer you know what are the challenges that you face when you make these ads but now i want to understand what are the challenges that that you face when you get the brief from the marketers you know handling marketers you know when they want uh, you know they want too much from you you know from that uh, one ad you know when they they expect you to replicate it from one language to another and retain everything that they want you to retain how do you handle that you know we resolve that in the right in the beginning itself at the starting point uh, you know i'll have to go back and tell you you know that without naming a brand if you can tell me you know how how you what what kind of practical or impractical things that are expected out of you i'll, I'll come to that in a bit you know, i'll give you the give me the largest solution to this you know as i was saying you know uh, the the very the very existence of 82.5 who we are an intuition of will be it was created and the 82 point name 82.5 comes from the longitude of india that defines the indian standard time and and our the purpose of our being was very similar to the parallel discussion that we having here you know we said india is such a diverse country and we cannot treat india as one so the capability that we bring on and that's exactly what we go to every client of ours is that we bring in the capability of thinking in a particular language it's not about translating or transliterating or transcreating culturally and language wise you should have the capability to think in a language you know i can't agree more with what kavita said the example that she gave of a cat crossing a road if it doesn't work in a kerala it doesn't work in a kerala but there has to be a cultural ones that one should be able to relate to uh, one, one of the bigger example i'll give you on abp news so that's a uh, uh, important client of ours that we work with strategically it's very very clear that we the business model itself is a localized business model there isn't an english channel that abp has abp has a hindi channel has a bengali channel has a tamil channel has a marathi channel has a gujarati channel now right at the top if you see the core of the brand and the core philosophy it's it's about being limitless you know it's it's about talking to people you know in a, in a particular manner and that dna trickles down into every market that you go but if you look at every market how we position ourselves is very different for example there's an abp anando in bengali where we say you know which, which is egiye thake egiye rakhe which in english would means that it keeps you ahead the hindi abp news channel we, we talk about aapko rakhe aage which is very similar but the moment you go to a maharashtra where the culture is very very different where we say that open your eyes to see it see the world Uh, and the latest example is just about a month back we launched abp in tamil nadu and the, and the story was very very different we call it abp nadu so if you see the brand name changes every in every state whether it's a nadu whether it's a maja whether it's a ganga so culturally you have to be very very different so when we came down to tamil nadu the biggest problem was that you know it's there's an outsider syndrome why would a tamilian accept somebody coming from the north typically as i said and you're an outsider that's when you need to crack the code you know understand the problem what you are solving understand the relevance and understand the nuances culturally on ground it's a very discerning audience in india it's a knowledgeable audience people are educated they want to have a certain point of view uh, there are certain traditions which they follow certain traditions they don't want they want to get rid of but yet they are rooted so these are the smaller pieces that we keep in mind and we came out with a campaign which basically said it was for the new tamilian the new age tamilian who wants to know who is basically a content consumer and just not a news consumer so that's how you look at each and every uh, pulse local nuances smaller pieces and you cater to that uh the problem is of it with with clients yes there are there are peer, uh, mostly at the mid level we do face problems where people typically want to translate and uh, you know everybody is at a expert in their own language and they want to translate it Uh, but as long as you're able to set this larger philosophy that translation is not the future ahead, it's about co-creating and it's about thinking in that language. Uh, things fall in place. Nitin, I see you log in, but you know we started late, so we'll take five more minutes. I just uh, quickly wrap up one last question, and then we'll uh, uh, close the debate. So, uh, you know, uh, one big fear with the you know uh, when you adapt something uh, from one culture to another is. 
the fear of stereotyping you know like like uh, somebody said right in the beginning you know everyone who's in south is a madrasi and everyone who's in north you know is looked in a particular way so you know when you are uh, uh, doing this uh, multicultural and multilingual marketing how can brands use cultural sensitivity in their messaging and eliminate stereotyping of a particular culture that's that's one thing that i would want each one of you to uh, uh, tell me as briefly as you can because we have already exceeded the time given to us rahul we can start with you and we can finish with uh, either honestly honestly uh, research if you really want a short answer yeah <laughs> yeah uh, because you know uh, i i face this problem every day what you just said you know i don't know how it will be perceived in bangalore versus north karnataka versus kerala versus south Ch- uh, chennai i don't know yeah and if i would be launching in us tomorrow i would know how it will behave in the west coast and east coast so the best way to do it is test it out ideally before you get into production yeah because then the you know the, the so test it out i mean that that's really how the challenge needs to be uh, dealt with in a day to day organization marketing environment kavita i think uh, listen listen and listen more and more to your consumers uh, that is a mantra which is surely not going to fail i mean i'm sure there are gaps but even after we do your, do you agree that there is, there is always this fear of stereotyping which exists and you know a lot yes, of as that we say uh, not when you have to show a south indian you just dress that person in a certain way and you 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 feel that you are done right absolutely and so, in fact i would go one step further to say um, even what navin raman spoke about uh, i don't know how far that holds good anymore you know because uh, today the south indian woman doesn't necessarily want long yeah. black hair uh, th- preferences are really changing and you know there are cohorts that are emerging across the country for different kinds of preferences it's making the marketing task much tougher on one side but on the other side i think what marketers should do and this is something which uh, i personally practice and we do as a company as well use your brand level national level campaigns to communicate the overall messaging and when it comes to the regional sensitivities cultural sensitivities etc address them more through your btl and your digital activations so you know uh, for instance we ra- ran a consumer activation campaign uh, q3 last year so what we did was uh, while the overall messaging was that of a consumer campaign which was called taya mela uh, we used regional video content on youtube to target different states and i'm not saying that's cool proof i'm not saying a person in tamil nadu only wants to see an idli becoming a Uh, tire not at all so what we also did was we mixed it up a little bit because you know it's no longer that a person in delhi does not want to eat idlis or a person uh, in fact uh, there was this very interesting communication zomato took out uh, around republic day which was all around this about how so many madrasis so called uh, ordered lucknow biryani and so many people in punjab ordered filter coffee and so on and so forth i think that's the beauty of india right so uh, the challenges are only going to get worse also because uh, you know people are transferable uh, there are so many north indians settled in bangalore so on and so forth they are all becoming a little more cosmo so uh, there is convergence in a lot of things and there is going to uh, there are going to be challenges as we go forward as well so my thing would be about using digital and retail strongly to reinforce the regional messaging uh, navin sure um what what i would say just i mean what we did was uh, uh the the use of local partners for local communication i mean we we empowered the local partners more uh in terms of uh, creating content so we just gave them the guidelines you know basically what you can and you cannot do and everything else we gave a lot more freedom for the local content creator when for example we did a project in vizag uh, i can't speak a sentence in telugu or none of my marketing team uh, so all all except one uh, but uh, the way we worked around was uh, we used local partners and we allowed them gave them a lot more freedom to operate uh, so they are a lot more sensitive about what is happening there what is okay to say and what is not okay to say 
uh, I mean, that was one way uh, we worked around. Nabin, would you want to uh, add something more? Yes, to, to simply put, you know, the only solution to this is localization. Utilization. You know, you go localization and go on a hyperlocal model. Uh, as uh, Rahul uh, right in the beginning said, research, but when you do, uh, how do you how do you research and with whom do you research? Choose the right kind of hire the mind, uh, right kind of people who understand that culture, who understand that language. Uh, choose your partners accordingly. You know, even at 82.5, if there is a, you know, we have offices across the country in four different parts of the country. Whenever there is a requirement, we reach out to each of the offices and take the help for that local particular need because they understand the language and the culture and wants better than anybody else. So to me, going hyper-local is the way forward. Thank you so much, all of us, for joining us. Nitin is back again, and uh, we have uh, exceeded the time that, we, that was given to us. Uh, it was indeed a very uh, interesting uh, discussion, and uh, we have been, uh, I mean, every report that has come out in the last few years has been uh, hinting towards uh, localization and uh, vernacular and regional be the future of media. So uh, thank you again for joining us, and uh, I would... Uh, like to say goodbye now. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Nazia. Thank you to all our panelists. Thank you for joining us here and a very good evening to you again.